Okay. Now, I start off a lot of videos by saying I'm really excited. But to say that I'm really excited right now would be an understatement. Because we just got a new machine. Now this machine is uh, the same the same make as our old machine. It's a Matsura Matsura. But it's uh, it's much faster, much more powerful, much more accurate. It is a 30 horsepower spindle. It um, rapids at like 1900 inches a minute and it has tool changes that are under three seconds. Let's watch. See so here we'll go ahead and press a green button. That's fast. <laughs> yeah, you said you were gonna get fired like last fall. <laughs> you so full of shit. <laughs> You could be the manager of the shop. Yeah. You'll also be its only employee, so <laughs> you won't really be the boss of anybody. It doesn't get paid. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad this has an air blast on the spindle. I'm also really glad we have 30, 30 tool stations instead of 16. When you look at this tool changer, it's deceiving. It looks like there's a lot more than 30. It really does. Oh no, we drug that thing across greatly. Oh, yeah. On pipes. This right here, this mist collector. Yeah. I think we need to build one. Yeah, I was thinking that too. For We could have it like a plenum that can catch welding smoke and crap out of this. Like yeah, one, one fan. One fan to roll them all. Yeah. Sure. Uh huh. We could build off the top of this machine a platform and have a little office up here. Maybe some lights and a desk. Oh, it's perfect. And a little like. Jewish man working that will do our taxes. Oh yeah. Um, perfect. That would be perfect, yeah. We'll call him, get this, an accountant. Alright, Mike, we're gonna back out tomorrow and then we'll teeter it. You, you need us to get off of here? It's been a while since I've shot any video because I've been so damn busy. Um, but today we're making... Today we're making one of these. Because <clears throat> while these fit BT35 tool holders really well, see? This is the machine that my old Matsura uses. Uh, these tool holders are BT30. Oh man. Went a little too deep on that one. Wow. That's what happens when you get greedy. See that? Metal just kind of melts around the aluminum. But the aluminum just melts around the carbide and sticks to the carbide. It doesn't completely trash the bit unless it breaks off some of the carbide. But if you get the aluminum off there, you can still use the bit for things like roughing, but I've never had really good surface finishes with a bit after something like that has happened. Oh, there it is. Okay, so the aluminum welds to the carbide as it gets hot, and then it breaks away. And this bit it still has, it has an edge on it. None of the carbide, the carbide didn't really break off in any place, but as the aluminum welds to the carbide and then breaks free, it dulls the edge pretty significantly. So this thing is never gonna really leave a great surface finish after now, but I can still rough with it. And for this part right here that I'm making, um, that tool holder, it won't really be that big of an issue because um, this is just a tool for the shop. Profile this side. Okay, now we just need to contour this face, finish out that pocket, put our engraving on there. We'll be just got the most of our tooling package in. I put together this tooling package on the majority of it came off of eBay. Um, these, all these are ER16 collet holders and they were brand new. They came from Technics. 
uh, and then the rest is HPI Pioneer and it's most of it's used except for these these I got off of eBay but they are brand spanking new and they came straight from Pioneer these are just regular collet holders okay we're still working on this part here it's proving to be pretty difficult this is a reject this is just too loose right here to cut kind of out in the open so I built a fixture plate that will hold a little bit better not a fixture plate but I took a set of car smart soft jaws and built the problem I was having is that as the end mill moved across this little ribbon of metal it shattered and it left a bad surface finish so Hopefully with this fixture, we can rectify that problem. This little guy right here is the toughest little part I have ever made. And the crazy thing is, is it's not done yet. It's still got two ops to go. That's very snugly. So this is the part I'm working on tonight. Uh, nothing special. Pretty, very simple part. Um, but when I was cutting the first, my first attempt, I broke a drill bit right here. It's a very deep hole. It's about two inches deep. And um, when you're drilling deep holes, you can't really, you can't really run with the same speeds and feeds. I broke a drill bit inside this hole and I had to start over again, which is kind of a disappointment, but, you know, it seems like every time I go to make a new part, um, it takes at least two times, two tries, so, oh well. See the little green box around constant velocity? It's on now. Thank goodness because that would have sucked. Spittle bearings, as a general rule, are insanely expensive. Spittle bearings for this machine behind me would probably cost us $10,000 to rebuild that spittle if we crashed it. And it has ceramic bearings, so it could take about one crash and that's it. That machine, on the other hand, I can pick up used, not used, but I can pick up bearings off of eBay for about 300 bucks and change them out myself. It just, it's a pain in the ass to change out spindle bearings though. So you never really want to have to do it. Today we're machining the base plate for that. Um, for a customer, it is a base plate for a laboratory apparatus. Um, and it's got to be really flat, so it's made out of Mike 6 plate. We've got it shinned up off the table here because if we don't, our spindle won't reach down far enough to hit it. We are very busy these days, and I haven't had a lot of time to film anything, um, but I've wanted to. And I'm just taking a quick moment to film this because I'm really worried I might screw it up. Um, and if I don't screw it up, it'll be remarkable because it will be probably the first part that I've gotten right the first time ever. It's very important that I do get this right the first time because the material alone for this part was like uh, 200 bucks, which I guess in the grand scheme of things is not a lot, but. It would set us back a lot in terms of time and um, and 200 bucks, you know, it's 200 bucks. Anyway, so we're about to uh, finish the program, load it into the machine and press go and uh, I'll record a bit more when the machine is running. Never been so nervous. <laughs> I really want to get this one right the first time. Looks like the champer was just the right depth. Oh yeah. A brilliant little holes, little pockets. Yeah, every hole, every facet. There's probably a hundred different facets to this part. Wow. Hole, then the threading operation, a pocket, and a champer. The champers on everything. 
Looking pretty clean. Happy with how this turned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah.